want to thank you all very much for coming here for the press conference at the First Unitarian Church. I am the Reverend Tom Goldsmith, a senior minister of the First Unitarian Church, and it is indeed uh, an extremely happy day for the entire congregation. We are just uh, delighted. I hope that you have all have a, a list of speakers, uh, and don't let the list fool you. Everybody is going to be pretty short and to the point. Um, but I think what it does provide for everyone is an acknowledgement of just how wide the community has been in support for all these many years, three years, two and a half months. And so it's just a, a joy to, to welcome some of the outstanding leaders of our community who never shied away from what some people thought controversial. They just lent their support in, in the utmost positive and welcoming ways. Since this is a church, I'd like to begin by lighting this chalice. And this is a ritual that we do um, every, every Sunday morning. And you'll see why, in just a moment, why I've decided to incorporate it in our press conference this morning. These are the words we say. Symbol of light and knowledge, symbol of warmth and freedom. We light this chalice as a symbol of our faith. Here we gather to celebrate hope and the infinite possibilities of love. So when we have lit this chalice for the last three years and two and a half months at every service, we have been especially cognizant of the flame as a symbol of freedom. In every mind and heart of every member of this church, we have focused on the work that is required to keep freedom alive for Vicki, her daughters Uretzi and Bella, and all immigrants who have been denied their basic human rights and dignity. The flame urges us to keep our hopes high, and we remind ourselves of the infinite possibilities of love, for we have poured a lot of love into this unique relationship with Vicki and her girls. You really get to know a family after more than three years of daily contact, and the love has only grown deeper every day. Because of the nature of who Vicki is, she has brought joy to our lives. Vicki never relinquished hope. In fact, she kept the flame burning brightly for our sake. Vicki had faith in God, faith in this church community, and faith in her daughters. Her girls would grow up strong, loving, and supportive of each other. Vicki has been an exemplary mother under rather difficult circumstances, wouldn't you say? I don't know how she's maintained her poise and equanimity throughout the many years. Vicki's life is no longer on hold. She leaves this church with a full grasp of the English language, a couple of hundred friends, and the confidence to pursue her dreams. You know, we don't need to wish her well. She has the power, the will, the intelligence, and the charm to make her way through life as a compassionate leader and a generous contributor to society. We hope that if Vicki is not too busy, she will come back and visit us on occasion. We would be extremely happy to see you and your daughters whenever possible. Vicki, please come up here and uh, share your comments with the press. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. 
thank you to all for being here in this special day. I remind the last day when everybody was here was in January 30th, 2018, the first day when I came to the shores. And I'm really happy to, to see you again after a really hard year with the COVID. So thank you. And today I want to thank Reverend Tom for having opened the door of this shore to my family, to all the members who are now a very important part of my life and of my daughters, since they are like my family. They adopt me without knowing me. They support me without getting tired. I have no words to thank them for having given me a safe home for more than three years. I want to thank you so much for the love that you have given us. I came to this shore without an empty, aging, broken heart, but with the hope and faith to continue with my family. And today I can say that I am full of love and happy to have arrived here on January 28, 2018. I have been very blessed to be here at First Unitarian Shore, my home. Thanks to all those who are part of Team Vicky. Thanks for the fall and the struggle that they have given day after day. Thanks to John Gregory for working tirelessly. Thanks for being a mother to me. Thanks for having been there in my days of sadness, depression. Thanks for listening and advising me. Thanks for being here and sharing my happiness today. You can all take off vacation, rest, and enjoy your family. <laughs> thanks to those who brought me here to continue fighting. Thanks for being my friends, and thanks for being here. Amy, Fabi, Luis Miranda, Easton, and Kay, Christine, Marta Black is here with me today, too. And thanks to my lawyers, David Benion from the Free Migration Project for fighting without giving up. It's thanks to him that today I can share with you that I can officially leave the room that the short decided to be our home. I'm leaving the room that I've, that I've heard myself crying in for many nights, the room where my daughters have spent hours playing since they could not go out to have fun in the park. Today, I leave the room, the home, but I not leave the shore, no the members and volunteers who have been with us for 1,168 days. Thanks to David Benion for helping to obtain a state removal from one year since April 12, 2021. I have no words to thank him for everything he has done for me, for my daughters, and for all those sanctuary families that are free today. Thanks to Skyler for accepting the challenge to be part of this battle. It has not been easy or in at all for hearing so many no from eyes for my case, but here we are and I know that he's happy to have been the, the person in charge of giving me this great news that I thought must have been a joke. Thank you to Skyler, my lawyer, for all these years of fighting against this system, but this is not over. So Skyler, keep fighting because better things will come. Thank you for restoring my confidence in knowing that there are excellent attorneys here in Utah. Thanks to all the volunteers who look after those doors 24-7, 365 days here to protect us without resting. Thanks for having been uncles, grandparents for my daughters. Thanks for playing with them and for being they're watching them grow day by day. Thanks for everything they were taught. I can be here for hours, taking everyone, but Team Vicky is very big and I will need more than one hour to give thanks to each one. But overall, thank you all for being in this fighting since January 28, 2019. Thank you for having been with me day after day and thank you for crying with me every time our requests were denied. Today, I know that we are happy because we finally hear something positive for us from ICE. Thanks to all the Team Vicky for making my fighting their fighting. Also, I want to say thank you to Ben McAdams, Erin Mendenhill, this way, Jen Wilson, Angela Romero, Tia for helping me knock on many doors. Thanks to them who took, to, who took time to help my family and thanks for being with my sharing my freedom. 
Thanks to the Team Vicky Committee for always being there, planning, organizing, taking care of us, and thank you for fighting every day. Thanks to my knitting team. Thanks for being unconditional friends. Thanks for so many conversation letters, tears, but we are happy. Thank you to all my friends from Sanctuary. Thank you for being so strong in this fire. You are worthy of admiration. I'm happy here talking and talking, but I have to share my space, so I will have to visit everyone and take them in person. Today, we celebrate freedom, but the struggle continues. Thank you to all, and I love you with all my heart, so now we can fly like a butterfly. There is my team Vicky forever. <laughs> so I don't know if the lawyer Skyler is yes, here. Skyler, yeah. Where is Skyler? Skyler? Is Skyler? Skyler Anderson? Yes. Yes, where? Come on up. Oh Come yes, you. he's here. Yay! <laughs> yeah. What a day, huh? <laughs> Uh, it's been a long, long time coming. Uh, to be honest, my role in this, I feel, is, hasn't been that big, but it was an absolute honor to play a role in that. It is absolutely clear that our immigration system is broken, and Vicky's case makes that very clear. I have heard immigrations tell me at the end of asylum cases that they believe my client, that they believe that my client will be more likely than not be persecuted, that they may more likely than not be killed in their native country. But, and it's always followed by a but, but the law still requires me to deny your case. That is a problem. And I'm as, as happy as I am today, I feel kind of constant whiplash being an immigration attorney from administration to administration with these executive orders, these band-aids on broken legs that aren't cutting it. Congress needs to act. We need a permanent solution. And until we have that, we're gonna to continue to have these kinds of atrocities happening in, in our country. This is an amazing story. It's a, great, it's a great moment right now. There are millions of Vickies in this country. I've represented many of them. There aren't enough churches to give sanctuary to all the Vickies of this country. This country needs to be that sanctuary. I'm not naive or arrogant enough to believe that we can save everyone, that, we're, that this country is, can save the world. But we can and we must do better, and I hope that we do. And I will continue to play that small role that I can in helping to do that. Thank you. A member of our church and also a representative, Liz Waite. If you please come up. Uh oh. All these things. Good morning. Vicki and her daughters and their story in our lives have expanded our humanity, our thinking, our beliefs, our prayers. Her fortitude has given me courage. Her persistence has caused me to examine what I stand up for. Both her fierce protection, along with gentle nurturing with her children, have created a distinct and lasting image of what motherhood is. Today, I think all of us are remembering our intersection and walk alongside Vicki's path to this day. I was one of those sitting out there chatting with other congregants before a special meeting where we all learned about a whole discussion that had been going on and an organization and proposed structure that could support a person needing sanctuary to keep them safe from harm and justice Real stuff, 
outside of normal church, even in here. That presentation must have been difficult for our church leaders to construct because it sounded so political. It was political. We couldn't even know too many details about Vicki and her story yet. In a time of rising political emotions and conflict, but that had really stirred others like and me to examine myself and my place and my purpose and our church community. Then we all had to think. We asked questions and we explored the implications and I was sitting there thinking of my intersection in the state legislature. And so we noted foundational words and realized foundational meanings of our UU principles. And for me, principles that I see in promises I make as a state representative. Inherent worth and dignity, compassion, acceptance, truth and meaning, democratic process, liberty and justice for all, all people. So always with sadness, but also wonderfully, I have learned about Vicki's story and Vicki's amazing character as we shifted our church operations to include safe home space for her and her daughters. Through all the steps in all these weeks and years, and additionally through even more isolating times with COVID, I have learned from Vicki about the large and small and perpetual impacts of seeking and living in sanctuary. Her story is of the extraordinary. It's about humility. It's about strength, love, and dignity. And everything I cared about and knew and believed about my community and my country Everything has new meaning and new significance for the roles I choose, for the actions I take, and for the messages I share, and the message today of celebration, of hope, and family, never so meaningful. Thank you. Aaron Mendenhall, Mayor of Salt Lake City. And three years ago, our friend Vicki Chavez took a leap of faith, having fled Honduras and abusive circumstances. She and her two daughters faced deportation by ICE and accepted an offer of sanctuary from the First Unitarian Church and their community at large. And today, she is a member of our community who has actually been unable to enter our community until now. This story of struggle to gain asylum in our country is one of so many, even of my grandparents. As immigrants and asylum seekers in the United States have faced increased threat of deportation in the recent years and under the previous presidential administration, my meetings with you, Vicki, over the years have always felt like an old friend. <laughs> and you can feel her passion, her tenacity, her celebration of life in her words today. Not a condemning word, not a word of anger or resentment. This is a woman of great power and love and tremendous influence on our broader community. She's a larger than life example of courage. She put her trust in the universe. She put her trust in the Unitarian Church. And today, I am so happy for you, Vicki, that your case has been granted a stay. This church has been your family's sanctuary for three years, but today, as those doors open, I hope you know that Salt Lake City welcomes you. We have welcomed you all along, and we can't wait to welcome you into the broader community. You and your daughters deserve permanence, and that security of freedom, and we'll keep standing by you every step of the way and hope that that permanence comes very, very soon. Thanks for having me today.
Angela Romero could not make it today, so I'd like to invite uh, Pat Shea to please come forward. Yeah. I will be short. I first want to thank Chief Mike Brown for his behind-the-scenes cooperation, and I want to note a bit about history. This state was founded by people who had been persecuted in Illinois and Missouri, and yet in an ironic way, when they came to Utah, they did somewhat the same thing to the indigenous population that we're trying now to make amends for. But remember, immigration is America, and for people who deny that or don't support it, they don't know history. Thank you, Beth, <laughs> Vicki, and please give your daughter the pyramid. Mayor Jenny Wilson. Well, thank you as I struggle with earrings and a mask and all the things we do nowadays. Um, what a special day. I um, feel so honored to be included. And I'll tell you, uh, I think Mayor Mendenhall and other elected officials, Liz, can share. We have really busy schedules, but the minute I got the great news um, yesterday from my lead uh, with our New Americans program, Z Zhao, that this was happening. Uh, I did drop everything to be with you. Um, thank you, Reverend, and to your congregation. Um, what we need most in our city here, in our county, in our state, in our nation, in our world, right now is more compassion. And the members of this community, this church, showed such compassion to you and your family. And who would have thought, um, I don't know that you knew, one month, two months, three years, thank goodness not another four. Um, but as was expressed by the amazing legal team, this journey, um, and I worked in Congress years ago, it's a long one. And it's one that we should simplify. And what I've learned so much um, by some engagement on this issue, uh, by going to the border and witnessing the personal interaction, the stories, was this is not um, just a humanitarian crisis that we're facing here in this country. It's an economic crisis. And anyone who argues that uh, we're on the wrong side of this issue by not allowing uh, more uh, a path to citizenship and moving out the barriers, um, they're, they're just dead wrong. This is uh, a, a solution that can have both a positive impact on our own humanity, on our compassion, uh, on people's lives, but also can support our economy. And I, I want us to be clear about that because I think the barriers towards that we've become so polarized are, are that we are, that it's one or the other. It's not. We can have both. We can support families like Vicky's and we can also um, see a positive outcome um, within our nation. And it's clear. I don't need to throw out any numbers or data, but we know even in this state, uh, we do come out ahead. And I would... Uh, ask my partners who work uh, at the federal government uh, to open up their hearts and minds on these issues and be willing to step up, have courage, and make change in this area. So I'll tell you, I was really um, struck by this challenge due to you know, being a mom and understanding from that perspective what it might mean to not allow my kids to get out during COVID, um, go to the park, do their thing, ride their bikes, et cetera. And I am so happy that uh, your kids are gonna go to Disneyland, <laughs> right? That I have read that in the paper. Um, yeah, your kids deserve to go to Disneyland. So let me know if I can help with that. 
today we want to make sure that Vicki, of course, and her family have a great future. So I'd love to see this opportunity to support further by anyone who has not been able to support here within the walls. This, it's, we call it a church, but it was a home. It was everything that this congregation provided. So thank you for that. Um, I think with now the Biden administration, there's hope. Uh, again, I would ask Congress to step up as well. Uh, I'm thrilled that you can have a life outside of the church. And I would share that you're always welcome in this community. And um, we want all of us to have you know that, what, no matter the walls that you're living within. And uh, I look forward to hearing about the Disneyland trip. Uh, before I close, I want to share that I received a flyer coming in, Take Action for Vicki. Um, there's the first bullet is to elected officials. We need you to be the strong advocates on Vicki's behalf and on behalf of all immigrants in our community. On this, we ask you today for your commitment. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Wilson. Thank you. In order to make sure that you understand that you are in a church, we will take up a collection for the Disneyland trip after, after the press conference. And, uh, okay, now um, I'd like to introduce uh, Joan Gregory, uh, who has really been the glue to the whole sanctuary uh, organization in this church. She has worked tirelessly. It sounds like a cliche, but she's probably slept a total of 10 hours over the last three years. Um, Joan? Joan, why don't you come out? Good morning. My name is Joan Gregory, and I'm the Sanctuary Director here at First Unitarian Church. And our congregation and our 200 sanctuary volunteers have been honored and humbled by the opportunity to accompany Vicki and her young family on their journey towards freedom since January 30th, 2018, over 38 months more than 167 weeks, now almost 1,171 days. Are you counting, Vicki? For the seconds, it's been 101,085,078 seconds, and out that door is the number that we will, we will have when we're ready. Vicki's been counting, and so have the girls. In that time, we have learned and gained so very much by getting to know Vicki Chavez, a strong woman, a strong mother, friend, colleague, and leader. Vicki is a loving, caring mother who fled life-threatening domestic violence and domestic abuse in Honduras, one of the most dangerous countries in the world for women and girls in order to keep her family safe and together. Vicki has taught us about love. Love so deep that she would not put her baby down during that long and treacherous journey from Honduras to the United States. Faith so strong that she has never been willing to give up. Trusting in God though it has been so tempting to give up along the way. Rooted in hope, not passive hope, but active hope, which is about becoming active participants and bringing about what we hope for. Vicki is well respected in our community, as you can see by all the people here today who have gathered here and online to witness the significant milestone in Vicki's struggle. Vicki will be an outstanding neighbor for you, a citizen of this state someday and this country as well. We who have supported you, Vicki, 
We who have raised our voices and signed petitions and marched and rallied, we who have taken action on your behalf, pledge to you, Vicky, that we will continue to work hard and long to make permanent residence status a reality for you. You have our commitment. You may be leaving the church building, the physical sanctuary, but this community, your community, will surround you and will be with you, Team Vicky, forever. Yeah. And that's a hashtag. <laughs> Team Vicky forever. This stay of removal was a long time in coming, and it is huge. But the struggle is not over for Vicky and her family. The struggle is not over yet for a path to permanent resident status for Vicki and for those who have taken sanctuary for years across the country. And the struggle is not over for the transformation of our system from the deportation system that it has become to an actual immigration system that welcomes the stranger. And so we need everyone to take action with us. Jenny Wilson asked you, I'm going to ask you to, elected officials, we need you to be strong advocates on Vicki's behalf. That's right. Yeah. And on behalf of all immigrants in our community and in our country, on this we ask you today for, you com for your commitment. Are you with us? Yes. yes. Thank you. Everyone, we need you to read and share Vicki's story. Follow Vicki's Facebook page, Team Vicki 3. That's for the three of them, Vicki and her two daughters. Use the hashtag Team Vicki forever to tweet about the press conference and all the other work that we will be doing and have done. Watch for actions and then take those actions, please. Especially watch for updates on the civil fines lawsuit and on advocating for private bills and encouraging our elected officials to do the same. Donate to the Sanctuary Family Fund or the Sanctuary Legal Defense Fund or both on the First Unitarian Church website to support the many expenses that will accompany Vicki and her family as they transition from sanctuary into the community. All funds go to support Vicki and her family. Go to slcuu.org, click on the red donate button with the heart, and then, um, and then donate to one of those funds. The direct link is slcuu.org slash about slash donate dash online. And then support organizations in our community and nationally that work day after day after day on immigrant rights and have supported Vicki in her struggle, including Comunidades Unidas in West Valley City here and Enriching Utah Coalition at cuutah.org. The Free Migration Project, that is where David Benyon works out of, who has been instrumental in Vicki's freedom, freemigrationproject.org. The National Sanctuary Collective, Colectivo Sanctuario, the sanctuarycollective.org. And we want, I want to add my thanks to the grassroots community-based organizations that were our very first connections with Vicki. We love you, we appreciate you. La Red de Solidaridad, the Salt Lake Sanctuary Network, and Unidad in Migrante. Thank you. We need everyone to take action. Our federal delegation to take action, our congressmen to take action. We need everyone on board for our immigrant community. Not just Vicky, but everyone. Thank you.
I, I think the press may want to be sure to get a shot here of President Biden, uh, which has been uh, knitted by, uh, by Vicky. It's, a, um, it's very fitting that the president is here uh, today. Um, for 10 years, this church has been uh, in a privileged relationship, we call it. Uh, we've, we've been connected with the sister church, San Esteban, in West Valley. And their, their pastor, uh, Dr. Uh, Pablo Ramos uh, is here to bring this portion of our press conference to a close with a benediction. We've enjoyed a, a tremendous relationship with uh, the Reverend Dr. Uh, Ramos and his congregation, and I'd like to ask Dr. Ramos to please come and bring this portion to an end with a benediction in both English and Spanish. Congratulations to Vicky, and thank you to the First Unitarian Church, uh, Pastor Tom, for uh, bringing hope to the entire immigrant community in uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, I have no words to express my gratitude for everything you have done during these past three years. Thank you. Del extranjero escuchamos las buenas nuevas del Pacto del Amor de Dios. Del extranjero recibimos el linaje de Cristo. Del extranjero recibimos ayuda y sanación. Cuando somos extranjeros llegamos a conocer a un Dios que nos libera. En el extranjero podemos experimentar la presencia de Cristo. Dios amoroso, mira en tu compasión, oh Padre Celestial, a los que en este país viven con la, con la injusticia el terror, la enfermedad y la muerte como sus compañeros constantes. Ten piedad de nosotros. Ayúdanos a eliminar nuestra crueldad hacia estos prójimos nuestros. Fortalece a los que dedican sus vidas para garantizar a todos igualdad de oportunidades y protección imparcial de la ley. Y concede que cada uno de nosotros disfrute de la justa distribución de los bienes de este país, concedió oh Dios, que tu santo y vivificador espíritu anime de tal manera a todo ser humano, especialmente a los habitantes de este país, que se derrumben las barreras que nos dividen, que desaparezcan las sospechas y que cesen los odios, a fin de que sanadas nuestras divisiones, vivamos en paz y justicia. Finalmente, Señor, te rogamos que nos dé las fuerzas para defender a los marginados, para ayudar a los necesitados, para salir en defensa de los más pobres y vulnerables y para acoger a aquellos que llegan a nosotros hogares, a nuestros hogares y a nuestro corazón. From the stranger, we hear the good news of God's covenant love. From the stranger, we are given the lineage of Christ. From the stranger, we receive help and healing. When we are strangers, we come to know a God who frees us. In the stranger, we can experience the presence of Christ. Look with love, O Heavenly Father, upon the people in this land who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as their constant companions. Have mercy upon us. Help us to eliminate our cruelty to these, our neighbors. Strength those who spend their lives establishing equal protection of the law and equal opportunities for all. And grant that every one of us may enjoy a fair portion of the riches of this land. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-given spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease. 
that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. For the immigrant, the refugee, the one we do, we do not know, we give our thanks and praise. Lord, we ask that you give us the strength to defend those who are marginalized, to give aid to those in need, to come to the defense of those who are poor or vulnerable, 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 and to welcome those who are on the move into our homes and into our hearts. Amen. So let me just quickly tell you, uh, before we get to the 15 minutes of your questions, uh, when, when this is over, uh, Vicki, and I'll escort Vicki up to ring the bell, to ring the bell of freedom, and then she will be going out those doors, be leaving the church in a very um, um, ceremonial way. Uh, she deserves that, and she's been waiting to ring that bell for a long time. Um, <laughs> Let me ask those who did speak, could you please come up because we don't know at whom the, uh, the questions will be asked. So if you did speak, come on up and then we'll um, be happy to take questions from the press. And uh, we really do want to hold it to uh, 15 minutes, so come, come on up, um, folks. Skyler, I think it's going to be a lot of legal stuff. Joan, come on up, come on up. Okay, um, I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see who's raising a hand, if that is all right. So why don't, we, uh, why don't we begin with questions now from the press. Um, I'd either belt it out, or, yeah, sure. Did you, did you uh, ever believe that this day would, would come? Uh, we have been waiting for this day for more than 39 months, and I'm here sharing with everybody that I'm free right now. And I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Did you ever lose hope? No, never. No. I never lost the hope and the faith in God. And this day is here. Yeah. What's the first thing you want to do? Uh, I'm going to share with uh, my family, because the First Unitarian Church and all the members who was here day by day with me. So it's my family. And now we can celebrate. And then I'm going to spend my day with my family, my mom and my sisters and brothers. <laughs> yeah, they never need to lose the hope, and we are need to fighting for them too because it's not just my fight because it's a last for family living at the church. No, now I now I feel happy and secure, and I can go outside and, and I can say. Mm. I'm free. You've been, you, have, you didn't ask for this fight, but you have had to um, raise up to fight for your freedom and learn English and, uh, and become a leader. Yeah. Um, how do you uh, intend to spend your time and, and do you feel that you are gonna advocate uh, not only for yourself or is this going to be part of your life forever, or do you hope to just enjoy joining the community and living a natural life? Yeah. When I came here in January, I never know it's, like, it's going to take like a long time. But I know what another families are feeling, and I'm part of the leader of the people who are fighting with this immigration system broken. So this is the beginning for a big battle, and I'm going to continue to fight for all the people who need me, or for all the people who want to hear my story, because this is not, this is not, this has been like a really hard for me and my family, but I'm ready for fight outside with the other people who really need me. Yes, we'll see. <laughs> uh, this is a state for one year. Are you, um, what happens after that? Uh, oh, my lawyer is going to respond that answer. Okay, <laughs> I'm no lawyer, not yet. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, so the fight continues obviously. Um, uh, she will have an opportunity to apply to renew that stay and um, prior to the expiration, and that's what we intend to do.
been a nightmare basically to work through this. Do you mind talking a little bit about what more needs to be done here? Where to start with that one? What more needs to be done? Um, there are serious problems with asylum laws. Um, like I said, that there, there are cases where the judge will tell me, you know, tell my client, yeah, I believe you. I believe that, um, that what you're saying is true. I believe that you fear persecution. I believe that more likely than not, you will be persecuted or, or harmed or even killed. Um, but um, a lot of asylum focuses on the why. Why are you going to be persecuted? Is the reason good enough? And if it's not, um, then you have cases like this where a judge will say, well, I believe you, but, but sorry. Um, one very unfortunate thing that happened during the Trump administration was a lot of decisions that were put forward by the Attorney General's um, Sessions and then Barr. Um, and Sessions specifically had done, put forward a decision, matter of um, AB, I believe it was, that took away asylum protections for victims of domestic violence living in countries where it's just dismissed as a family matter. And I mean, that was just unnecessarily cruel and, and ridiculous. And that's a place to start. Let's get rid of that. Um, let's um, look at the people here who are contributing to our society and let's not deport them. Let's not deport fathers who are providing for families. I mean, this, this system is, is tearing families apart and creating far more problems in many cases than they, they are solving. Any other questions? Thanks, Scott. Yep. Any other questions? Uh, where are you going to, are you going to stay with family after you leave the church or where are you going to live for, the, for at least the, the next year? Oh, no, I'm going to stay here in Utah because here is my community, Salt City, and I'm going to stay here forever because my whole family is here. I, I saw a hand up over here. Somebody have a question over here? Yeah. Um, so, you got Hi. the news Monday. Yes. Tell me a little bit about like, how the news came and what your reaction was. It was really fun because I was preparing the, the meeting for every Tuesday with the people from the Colectivo. And then I saw an email from my lawyer from Skyler. They say, great news. Vicky, you have a state removal from one year. And I say, what's going on right now? And I say, and I respond to him and I say, oh, this is a joke. And he say, no, Vicky, I'm never going to have a joke like this. And I called my mom and I was crying. And my mom was very worried because she thought something is happening. But I was crying because I was so happy and I can't believe it. And I say, my mom, I'm free. I have a state removal from one year, but I can't believe it because we, nobody expect the news, nobody. And then the lawyer say, yes, Vicky, you can go outside, you can walk for four streets, and then you can back and finish to read that email because you are free right now. I think my, my kids are very happy because they want to go to Disneyland. They are ready for share more time with the family. And my oldest girl is so happy because she's going to have like a more friend for sure. The baby is ready for the school and, and we are going to do the best for my kids outside. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jim, you're going to answer these in Spanish and English. Uh, ¿Qué mensaje le tienes a la comunidad, bueno, no a la comunidad de que está en tu misma situación, o que estuvo en tu misma situación, está en su misma situación? ¿Qué, qué, qué mensaje les tienes a ellos, a ellas y a su familia? Uh, uh, me gustaría decirles de que, que esta lucha apenas empieza, ¿no? Vamos a, a seguir luchando para que el presidente... Biden puede hacer algo por todas las familias que hemos vivido en santuario, porque podemos escuchar de muchas organizaciones hablar de TPS o de Dreamers, pero casi nunca escuchamos de las personas, de las familias viviendo en santuario. Así de que ellos saben de que no tienen que perder la esperanza, la fe y que la lucha continúa. Y ahora con una nueva administración, pues lo, nuestros sueños de permanecer en este país pueden ser justos. 
Y que aprovechando que hablas, di, di, hablas en español este, y, y que comentas un poco, hiciste tu mensaje en inglés, quiero que des tu mensaje una vez que ya sea este anuncio que, que, que estamos haciendo, este, este mensaje tan, tan lleno de esperanza para, para ti y tu familia. ¿Cuáles son tu, tus palabras en español? <risa> Que, que estoy, estoy muy feliz porque este día pues nadie lo esperaba tan pronto, llegó como un milagro caído del cielo, como cuando estás esperando una lluvia por mucho tiempo y nunca sabes cuándo llegará. Y estoy feliz de poder compartir con todos los que han estado día conmigo, día a día conmigo en esta lucha, a, a la iglesia y a todos los miembros y voluntarios que estuvieron 24-7, 365 días del año cuidando la puerta, cuidando a mi familia y ver crecer a mis hijas. Y estoy muy, muy contenta de, de poder compartir con todos este día. Vicky, do you want to give us just the gist of, of what what you just discussed just what was the your spanish is amazing by the way <laughs> <laughs> could you just tell us in english what was this uh conversation about oh yes uh, i was sharing with with him that i'm so happy to be here with my family with the fearson italian church who is my family and i'm so happy to celebrate with everybody and and, and i know that all the people who have been living in sanctuary we know that president biden can do something for us and we need to start to fight him more strong together and, and let's do it. Yeah. Great, thank you. Ah, podemos cumplirlo una vez que tengamos la recaudación de fondos, right? Don't we need to make like a fundraiser right, right, for going right. to Disneyland because my kids wants to go to Disneyland. Mi, mi, mi bebé, la chiquita de tres años y medio, que llegó aquí de cinco meses, la vieron crecer, gatear, dar sus primeros pasos, sus primeras palabras. Es aquí donde ella juega, canta, toca el piano y ella quiere ir a Disneyland. So, yeah. so, de, claro que sí, ya podemos ir donde, donde quieran invitarme, me pueden invitar. <laughs> yeah. Are there any other questions? ¿Ah? Pues mira que yo tengo la bendición de que cada vez que necesito algo, todo viene aquí a mi casa, entonces ya tengo la primer vacuna que me la pusieron aquí. Ya. Yeah. Así que, en pocas palabras, este día, ¿qué es para ti? ¿Qué es lo que significa en tu vida? En poquitas palabras, hemos hablado tanto de tu encierro. Hemos hablado horas y horas. En pocas palabras, hoy día, ¿qué es para ti? Es un día inolvidable para todos. Un día que Sale City y Utah lo va a recordar para toda la vida porque sabemos de que han sido cuatro o tres años difíciles con la administración vieja, pero tenemos la esperanza de que, que podemos seguir luchando y, y poder obtener algo. I think if that, if that uh, represents our, our questions, what we're going to do is Vicky and I are going to take our time to go up to ring the bell, and you may want to take this photo op and set up outside and get a shot of Vicky leaving the church. So we'll just take our time and uh, we'll be ready for you. Thank you, thank you all very much for coming here this morning and um, thanks for all your reporting for all these years, thanks so much. <laughs>